Here, you can exercise your rights to freedom every day without leaving your home. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Hello and welcome to Real Talk with myself, Anne Doda, right here on SABC3, where the stage is yours. So I've observed that there is a new mob mentality forming on the streets of social media. They incite hate as they comment, troll, and bully through careless words and ignorant opinions. They post things, mean things, that they would never ordinarily have the courage to say to another human being if it had to be in person. So later on in the show, I'm joined by Dumi Marake, who's had first-hand experience of the social media lynch mob. Do join in on the conversation. And then a little bit later, everyone has been talking about the deadly outbreak that has created a lot of panic and hysteria. So we thought we'd get the experts in to explain hysteriosis. So get your questions ready. Right now, though, it's time for the good doctor of entertainment, Phil Impella. He is here and he's got a whole lot to talk about. Good evening. today with a dose of commentary of some of the big entertainment news. I mean, we all know it happened, but it doesn't matter until full spoken about it, right? <laughs> so, well, yeah, yeah. Hit us with the entertainment tsunami. Well, good. I mean, the biggest story, of course, is the Grammys. Yeah. Uh, uh, the biggest snub ever, you know, the, <laughs> the king, Jay-Z, getting nominated eight times but working out with zero. I think the last time... Yeah. That ha remember, India Ari was nominated six yeah. times and she won nothing. <laughs> this now, and I mean, and India Ari wasn't like held the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, it's Jay Z, and you, I mean, if you get how um, uh, uh, the album performed, and in terms of social media hype, in terms of everybody yeah. talking about this is an album of the culture, you know, yeah. this is like the moment. And for him to not even get at least a record in an A1, there was a bit of a that's of what you issue. get for cheating on Beyonce. But as again, it was a, <laughs> it was a competitive year. I mean, look at I mean, Humble, which won uh, 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 by Kendrick Lamar. It's a great song that was played everywhere. So and we can't deny that Bruno Mars has had. A yeah. phenomenal year. Yeah, of truth be told, I'm not a fan of that album. You don't have to be a fan, but you yeah. must just know that like he did well for music. Yeah, I know, I know. I only like Versace on the floor. But anyway, <laughs> bring it back to South Africa. Mm. We've got uh, Lady Smith, Black Mambazo, breaking their very own record of being the most nominated African group artist of all time. You know, they held that record with four Grammys. Now they've got five. She just, does. you know, uh, uh, extending yeah. that. I, it's good. You know what it is? They're not going to report this. People are not going to... Your kids won't know this. When your kids get home, sit them down and tell them that ladies with black man Bambazo have mm. got five Grammys, yes. okay? And five. I Britney mean, Spears doesn't have any. Just and it's know. big because when you look at um, who else has most awards, it's Angelique Kicho. And when you look at the name recognition, yeah. I mean, Angelique Kicho is so big all over the world and stuff like that. And she's celebrated all over Africa. But when you look at ladies with black man yeah. with five, mm -hmm. they don't get the same. You know, but anyway, that's fine. I hope there's day. traction of that. Um, I, I hope so too. But then you know, you know what? What will happen is like it's what happened with Brahu. I think it will have to be um, the artists that are hyped up now yeah. would have to engage with Lady Smith, Black Mambazo, okay. do something with them and stuff like that to bring them into I like, hear exactly uh, yeah, what you're saying. The modern them. Uh, so we move on to Unati. I mean, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, I want to be Unati. <laughs> I just want her body. Like, okay. Like, 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 I mean, like, this is so amazing. Coming off of a year that where she had like really, really, really bad headlines yeah. with her divorce and whatever and for her to take on this uh, uh, Kilimanjaro thing and actually make it to the summit and I mean, for young girls right now in South Africa, looking at her and saying, mm. you know what, it doesn't matter what everybody's writing about you, it doesn't matter what the mm. industry's saying about you, if you want to do something and you put your mind and heart to it, it can happen. And also, I, I, I appreciate the fact that in 2018, yeah. you know, you, 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 her and Mel, her and yeah. Mel Bala, yeah. they, they are my spirit animals. And, you know, because the whole, oh, divorce is the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Your life is over. No one wants to associate with a divorcee or somebody says or all of that. They have taken that narrative and they've literally shredded it. I know, I know. I mean, she ran with it. I mean, like, she pieces. looks amazing. <laughs> I think we've, uh, we've, we've got her. This is her as she summited yeah. uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Let's check it out. Hi, everybody. It's official. Here we are on top of Africa. 
2020. It says Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro, congratulations, you are now at Uhuru Peak, Tanzania, 5,895 meters high, above sea level, Africa's highest point, the world's highest freestanding mountain. Oh, Malume! You see, we're teaching them. <laughs> of course, of course, Unati will take oh, Tosa to Kilimanjaro. So, listen for me. Do you know what, for me, uh, what stands out here is, obviously, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro yeah. is, it's a, it's a men, y yes, you must be it's physically fit, it but it's a, it, you need mental strength, exactly. right? Exactly. So, she's on there, she's climbing. We all know mm. that she had a really good relationship with, with, with uh, Dato Huma Sikela. Yeah. You know, she gets news that he's passed away. She's on there. Also, she was very close to Kuku Zulu, yes. as well as uh, Uli Seho Zulu, yes. uh, Uli Seho, the, the, you know, the, the wife. wife. Yeah. So, she's... And, and she's gone through all of this herself. Yeah. So she's carrying all of that. Exactly. And, you know, and, and you now your, your mental capability is being tested. Yeah, look, like I, mean, like I said earlier on, I mean, if girls right now are confused about who to look up to right now with all this noise on the internet and on social media, that's a lady that you can look up to right now because what she has done is, is it's amazing. And I mean, I mean, I can imagine like coming off of the Gugu Zulu incident, yeah. you know, and with yeah. her being that close to the story, I mean, like what it took for her to actually and do that. And also your amazing. family and friends are not going to be excited that you're climbing Kilimanjaro. Uh, not really. You no, know, you know, uh, they're yeah. not. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't, I don't know what no, more can I say to I, I was scared for her. I was just like, you're teeny pachep. What are you doing there? And you know, she was like, listen, it's something that I want to yeah. do, so I'm going to go do it. So, salute. Kudos to her. Salute. All right, cool. Do you have time for any more stories? Yes, <laughs> I want to talk about the fact that, you know, A, Usain Bolt was out in the country this weekend <laughs> doing the Vosho, <Voshaw, laughs> yeah. right? When's he Vosho? And then, we watching the Grammys last night. Does Rihanna not break into the Guara Guara? Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> She's pulling up Beyonce. Remember when Beyonce came out with a uh, uh, quiet uh, thingy? What do you call it? Spantle oh, or whatever. Oh, run this world. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So uh, uh, Rihanna is doing her own thing right now with the Guara Guara, uh -huh. bringing South Africa back to the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, South Africans lost their mind. And then someone tweeted, ooh, Rihanna doing the stanky leg. Oh. Wow! <laughs> South Africans came. They were like, ah, ah, I see, I see stinky leg. That's the Gara Gara. So we're glad we need to find the source of it. Who yeah. was the first person to do the Gara Gara? Uh, well, I wouldn't know. DJ Bongs. Uh, look, no, 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 okay. If DJ Bongs not the first one and he's claiming it, good for him. Because I believe if you're on social media, somebody else will correct us. Really? Let's go. Yeah. Who? DJ Bongs, let's talk to you. Hey, Rian, let's do this. Okay, so because you're always the voice of reason, yes. right? You know, I'm the hothead in this yes. relationship between you and me. I'm the yeah. hothead who's like, yeah, but you know, they must credit, they must credit. Because mm -hmm. I mean, when you say Beyonce did it, Beyonce flew those pants like guys yes. and said, guys, you teach me, it's mm -hmm. your move. Are we allowed to be upset as South Africans and be like, guys, show us where it's from when we are, We've taken our fair share <laughs> of American culture. Let's yeah. not act like yeah, we haven't yeah, taken from yes, Maple yes. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. That, I mean, there's a saying in art that says there's nothing new under the sun, which means that there's no such thing as an original idea. Somebody would have done that. They might not be as famous as the person who's making it popular, mm -hmm. but somebody would have done that before. I mean, like, somebody saying stinky leg. I mean... Is, they're not very far off. Somebody in South Africa would have seen the Stanky Leg, but Stanky Leg has been around for more than three years or, or like maybe no, four. Very like, long. Do you understand? Long, yeah. Somebody could have seen that and interpreted that in an African way, and then Guara Guara would have come along. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Okay. So I think this whole thing you got to say is this person stole this, this person stole that. It doesn't work. It's, it's one thing for somebody to plagiarize a whole yes. body of work. Okay. It's another thing okay. for somebody to be inspired by somebody else's work. Uh -huh. And once we start um, labeling things as, oh, somebody stole this then we're trading on a very fine line because like i said there's nothing new under the sun mm. whatever it is that you think is original to you somebody else might come and say hey i did that 15 years ago for me i was also like okay we, we can't say we, we upset that they're doing those yeah. moves they can take them they can have them we've taken from them but i always want to see how people can get a financial like 
step in the right direction from those things. So he tweeted that and yep. he sent it to Rihanna and Rihanna retweeted him. Yes. So if he can't make that work, then... And you see, and, and you see that's, that's what I always tell these kids on, on social media. That if you've got a phone and you've got access to internet, don't be sitting at home and saying that you've got talent but you're not getting anywhere. Because imagine this. Imagine if a choreographer right now in South Africa, now that this Guara Guara thing is getting attention because of Rihanna, yeah. put out a killer performance. Put it out on YouTube. On thing, on YouTube. Tag all these international celebrities. One of them might just hire that person yeah. and then they might just have a, a video... With that, I mean, you look at our, our Taylor Swift. I mean, the dancers on the latest yeah. Taylor Swift video are dancers that have been on YouTube yeah. all this time. So they're getting opportunities because of that. I'm so glad you said that because this mm. is where the discussion is going to now. You're yeah. going to go, but you'll be back a little bit later. The discussion is going towards the internet. And you said, yeah. you know, you can use the internet. And I feel like at this point in time, we're using the internet for the wrong reasons. Absolutely. Instead of getting ahead, we're using it for other reasons. So from things that have been trending and most talked about to people who train for the wrong reasons and get dragged on the streets of social media, once again, using internet for the wrong reasons, uh, we have got the powerhouse that is doing Morake. She's joining us after the break. And welcome back to Real Talk Right here on SABC3, where the stage is yours. Cyberbullying, trolling, and dragging are terms that I'm pretty sure have made their way into the dictionary and they're part of our daily lives. Some of us have faced these hurtful and harmful actions. Celebrities are perhaps the biggest victims as they're frequently the subjects of trolling, body shaming, and of course, like I mentioned, bullying. Just a week ago, actress Ndano Duma, she was asked by a Twitter user why her baby was fat while she herself was attractive. Mm -hmm. Actress Nomza Mabata was criticized for recycling a dress just under a year ago. Gugum Klungu was recently embroiled in a bitter tour with rapper Gigi Lamain and told to stay in a lane and she made the word aunties a trend. Dumi Morake recently tweeted, I think I'm ready to play on these streets again, but just in case, let me put on my protective gear. <laughs> Is your protective gear on, honey? Honey, listen. Is it on, honey? I got everything, man. I'm ready for this. Okay, so there's a specific moment for me that I want to ask you about. Like, we'll get to the, you know, the entire Afrikaans race thinking that you don't like them. And I'm just like, guys, <laughs> Dumi calls us and speaks Afrikaans. Trust me, if anybody doesn't like you, it's not her. <laughs> okay? But we'll get to that one later. So you and your family, terrible thing. You're involved in a car accident, mm -hmm. right? and you give us all a really big shock, I must mm. just say, because Sorry. you see accident, but you don't see people survived. Yeah. So then you're like, no, no, what's going on? What's going on? What's going mm. on, right? When you are fine and you come to and the, everything is cool, when you go on social media and you are now facing people saying, it's karma that mm. you and your family, your children mm. got into a car accident, mm. what goes through your mind? I, I was so glad I went through the car accident before I saw that kind of hate. Yeah. Because it helped me contextualize it. It actually helped me go, you have no idea how little of a difference you make in my effing life. Oh, yes. I'm so glad I went through what I went through because I literally could have lost my life. Oh, your you husband, know, your or, children. Or my children, you understand? So it's it's... Hey, it's interesting what matters to me now, hey? Because I looked at all of that stuff, and do you know what the first thing I did, which I've never done before is, and now it's become a habit? Yeah. I went and checked the profiles of the people saying this karma stuff. Yeah. God loving, Jesus loving, family men. Love my wife. Love Lo my wife, yeah. Jesus first. But oh, I would say 98% of them claiming this love for God. And I'm thinking, you're a Christian, but you're preaching karma. Yeah. Karma's not in the Bible, bro. <laughs> I don't and know which Bible you're reading. I don't know which one you're reading, man. You know. Um, but then in that instance, I thought, I'm going to stop reading now. Because here's the thing. You become thick-skinned in this industry, but to, to a certain extent, you're human. Yeah. And there are times things yeah. will cut you. I was vulnerable. I was actually going on social media feeling like I haven't told anyone how I'm doing. It's all been from my PR team. Didn't any, which is good, but didn't anyone tell you, no, to me, don't go on social media because they are aware what's happening? It was at that point that you could see the snow <laughs> <laughs> of my 
manager because my manager was with me throughout yeah. this whole ordeal. And they were like, you are deleting those things off the phone. The same thing that happened when Dumigate happened. Mm. <laughs> yes, it has been named. It's when Dumigate, <laughs> Dumigate, darling. When Dumigate happened. Look at you, Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Look at me, girl. <laughs> I decided to, to remove Facebook, Instagram, Twitter off my phone. Okay. Pages. I took them off my phone and I decided I'm going to leave this alone because you go in there, you get as ugly as it. And, and you know, you, you think you're just going uh, to, to just see what they say. Mm. And because you get told, no, don't, I'm a replier girl. Hey, I, I, the girl I've seen. I will reply to you. You are not going to come and speak nonsense to me and think that it's going to be normal after that. You and I are going to have words, right? <laughs> And, and, and so at the times when you're like, okay, it's fine. I think I've stated my case, it's yeah. done. Then you think you're not going to reply. Yeah. What, what triggers you? What makes you reply? What, what must they attack? If, if I feel like you have some degree of brain in you, in what you're saying, no yeah. matter how stupid uh, or baseless it is, yeah. then I respond because I go, this could become intelligent because this person is let's, looking for attention. Let's engage so each let's other. engage. Yeah. Those people are engaged. Then when I see her, no, you're actually just looking for attention. I don't bother. Yeah. The other thing I do, which I know a lot of people right now will tweet about and go, yeah, that is BS, is I look at how many followers you are, you yeah. have. Yeah. And if you're an egg, if you're faceless and you have zero followers or two followers, yeah. I go, okay, so you're using me to start gaining followers or to announce your arrival on Twitter. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, that's not me. So I don't respond. So how do, how do your friends support you? Because... Uh, I mean, I, I was also dragged through the heat just a week and a half yes. ago. Yes. And, and it was interesting to me to see how people around me are, right? Yeah. Uh, people who know me, people yes. who are my friends, my family. Yes. Obviously, so my, my sister's like, I, I can get in. I was like, no, Tim, so you're not going to tweet about mm. anything because then now you're going to get yes, dragged get as well. Dragged. Then they're going to bring up your stuff as mm. well. I was like, let's just leave it. Mm. I'm, I'm really okay mm. with it. So you know, the people around you, how are they? What are they saying? What are they doing? And what do they want to do for you? Because obviously people want to come into the do me defense force. Yes. Funny enough, it's made my family curious about social media because they couldn't be bothered. My family is, I always say Facebook is the bri. Mm. It's Chisanyama, we're all there. Mm. And Twitter is there where there's just the uh, drive-by shootings. There it's the streets where you walk a motor while the car's passing, yo, and yeah. then it's gone, and then you continue. So my, my family is mostly on Facebook. Okay. So they, they generally know that on Facebook I'm focused on family. I, to me more, I get the character, the crazy person, the, yeah. the fighter, isn't really on Facebook. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to Twitter, I have found that I have enough followers who fight for me. I don't need to fight. Yeah. It's very rare lately that you'll find that I respond. I respond, like I said, only if I feel like I can make add some intelligence here because maybe this mm. guy needs to be put somewhere. They can be steered to mm. understand. But I find that black Twitter, which I feared for life, are your people. When they come in there to defend you. They're your people. And, but also, I, I find that black Twitter has become more and more intellectual mm. and it's starting to also now subdivide. Now mm. you are finding the black Twitter that's just out for a fight and mm. then you find the people who are going, listen, we are actual human beings who must still walk off these social streets and meet people in the streets. Mm. And they're like, let's act that way. So um, another thing I find is... Uh, when you are involved in an engagement with someone on social media, is that people like to threaten you with your job, mm. right? Where they which kills me. <laughs> it kills Why me. does it kill you? It kills me. I'm self-made, baby. <laughs> How you gonna fake my job? How you gonna get me fired? What they gonna do for me? Oh, you gonna get me off the radio station? That's my booze money, baby. That's not my living. <laughs> People think they get power on social media. <laughs> it's like we're calling your boss. <laughs> no, they even go after, they go after your jag, bruh. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's who drives it. Yeah, let's, let's, get, let's lose her, that car. I'm let's like, honey, hers. ask them how I got it before you try and get it away from me that way. So you've never thought to yourself, oh, you know, this could affect my pocket. No, you know why, Anel? Yeah. I'm, I, I've never treated people in a way that would justify that I need to lose anything. I've mm. never trodden on anyone to be where I am. I am where I am and I acknowledge my fans, my supporters, even my critics who I improved because of, you mm. understand? Mm. So if you come as some random, to be honest, think about it, Anele, the person mm. dragging you on Twitter, 
walks out of their house, nobody even knows they've walked out of their house. Yeah, yeah. They, no, they cough, no one notices they've coughed, mm. okay? I step out, someone's gonna notice I stepped out. Mm. So the only place they are seen, heard, acknowledged is on social media. It's really important to them. So if they need to make noise in that space, in that echo, let them by Go all right means. Ahead. Don't let it disturb your peace. It stopped it disturbing my peace, but I'll tell you where it started to affect me. My eight-year-old has started playing on social media, and for the first time, I cried over stuff that was on social media because when my son went online, he was going to go play Roblox or whatever. Mm. And he starts to see, you understand? Because there's, then pop -ups. there's, there's pop ups. There's pop ups. And I don't know what he saw because my son came to me and he says to me, Mommy, now that we've had the car accident, will the people let Jacaranda stop being mean to you? And in that moment, I thought, you know, it's one thing when I'm fighting my own battle, but if I have to start protecting my children, if it's going to start touching those people, Mm. Then you're touching me in my studio. L literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Because, you know, I think, and, and I think and I know that when you are, like, in that heat and you are being dragged, you have to assume a certain level of arrogance mm. to protect yourself. Mm. And then, because literally I remember tweeting, guys, the only reason I'm getting dragged is because I'm the most famous one in the yes, equation. Yes, which is true. And then people are like, oh, now, oh, yeah, which is true. famous, so famous, no, but, you know, but guys, I, I'm, did I lie? <laughs> I'm sorry now that I, but now what you're saying about the fact that when you leave your house, no one knows who you are, but mm. when I leave, it's, and it's not who you are, mm. you're not arrogant, but you're having arrogant. to call on weapons that you, yes. you wouldn't ordinarily use, yes. right? Yes. So outside of, you know, the, the accident and, 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 and just, just being thankful that you are here and so is your family and everything you love, what has, you know, the entire racial incident taught you about yourself and what has coming through that accident taught you about yourself? I'm more sensitive than I thought I was. Yeah. And I feel like I'd lost touch with who I am. I mm. love to laugh, bruh. And a day without a laugh for me is a, is a bad day. I need to know why I didn't laugh. Because, you know, I've laughed through everything. My, my, my lowest of low when I lost my mother, I still found moments of laughter. When I lose that, I know something's wrong. And I started to look at my TL and I was like, Duni, you were being deep. Who's this deep girl? <laughs> You're not deep. Where's the feel good things? What is this thing, you know? Uh -huh. And I've decided that's who I'm going to focus on. Even people who tease me and I know that it's in a good spirit, yeah. I will go for those people. The other people are psychopaths. That's, yeah. how, that's what I've learned. Yeah. I, what I've learned about myself is to me, you're actually more discerning, discerning than you give yourself credit for. There are people who are sick. Yeah. It is sick that you think what would hurt you what you would not want to happen to your own people, you think it's okay to do to other people. Yes. It's not okay. You are sick. And you think you can do things like that without a consequence. You are sick. And I also learned something. I am only human. Tumi Marake can be loud, but I know Tumi Marake can be loving. And the mm. people who know me know that. And people who barely know me have seen that. You know what I mean? I am mm. still human and I'm still a woman, okay? And there are things that will cut me. And it hurts me that the biggest thing I've seen, the trend I've seen on social media, is that you do, you do not dare be a woman and be successful. You do not de dare be a black woman, have a voice, a brain, and be successful. You will get dragged by men and women, and it... Mm, whew, the word was coming out, me off. It, it upsets me that that has become the weapon with which they are waiting for an endless weak moment. Yeah. And then we don't... You know what's sad? Yeah. We don't mess up. The people around us mess up or something around us goes off a bit. They go, yes, Arken, Arken, yeah, Arken, Arken. Yeah. Any opportunity for them to feel like on some level you are on their level or they can drag you down to their level or lower. They are waiting. And it has taught me that I don't need to be on social media. Listen. Of course you want to hear more of that. Uh, what are some of your experiences of social media? Have you been trolled, blocked? Okay, okay, blocked is not a big thing. Many of us are blocked by people. Or even dragged for posting something that you thought was cool. Send us your WhatsApp voice notes. Uh, we do want to hear your stories. Uh, more with Dumi and Phil after the break.
Welcome back to Real Talk right here on SABC3, where the stage is yours. In studio, we've got Dumi Murake and the good doctor of entertainment, Phil Impella. We are deep in the discussion of social media. I mean, your kids are on it. Do you know what's happening there? Do you know the things that are being said to people? So here we are. Let's chat. Uh, Phil, yeah. here's the one thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, it does the term... There is no PR that is bad PR still exists. That's an illusion. Oh, <laughs> come through. No, like, seriously, that is an illusion that uh, I've been told so many times. Uh, it's ridiculous. Um, you are, the publicity works for you to a point where people are willing to allow it to work for you. Mm. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? There comes a point where people say that we're tired of this, and that's when the negative publicity or whatever you want to perceive as a publicity for you works against you. So don't believe that. It's wrong. Are you telling me that if I walk around without my underwear... <laughs> okay, look at this. Okay, you are to be more like right now. You got here without having to do that. Yes. Now, if you do that, you will get attention on social media for like, what, two days, three days? And after all, you jeopardize the credibility of your brand mm. with people who could be giving you bigger opportunities. Ah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that. I mean, like, I mean, even people who get in with that, you know, who are taking mm. off their underwears right now, mm. I always say that, okay, fine. Are they going to be around in five years' time? What if they got in doing something else? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I don't think that if you are already in the game and you feel that you're not getting the traction that you need, what you need to do is go to all these gimmicks and extremes or whatever. Mm. No, 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 no. Go back to what got you into the industry to begin with. Mm. That authentic thing that got you here is what's going to keep you here. Uh, and in terms of commentary now, yeah. because, for instance, let's look at Ugugu, right? Ugugu, mm -hmm. um, where Gigi Lemayne tweets this picture yeah. and everyone's, everyone's having a go at it. It's hilarious. People find it hilarious. Yeah. Google also finds it hilarious. Are you not allowed to comment on things, social commentary, because you are of a certain standing when it comes to your, your, your career, your job, who you are? Hey, that's a difficult one. Look, like, like for instance, I, mean, I don't follow celebrities for the mere fact that I socialize oh, in the same space yeah. with them oh, and I do what I do. And what I've seen happen is that sometimes, like, I don't even follow you and we're good. Yes. <laughs> because I don't want a situation where you're going to say something and then I respond to it and you misread it and your fans interpret it in a certain way and it becomes something bigger than it should. You know uh, what I mean? You know where I'm going with uh, this? Yeah. It's that kind of thing. So I think... If you are going to be a, uh, a commentator on a platform like that, you need to be aware of the fact that your words are going to be misinterpreted. Yeah. And when you're dealing with celebrities, you need to understand that they sometimes are going to be act on mm. by the reaction to your words. You understand? I could sit at home and watch you post something about me mm. that doesn't offend me. However, the reaction of other people to that thing... Will get me offended. <laughs> will get me but offended. In, but remember, there are also trolls who are just waiting. Yeah, oh, no, They're just course. waiting. And I think you're right. That commentary, there's people who are waiting for you yeah. to say something, you know. I, I'll give you an example. Uh, we, we interviewed this Afrikaans musician, and the minute this person found out this person was there, they posted uh, an article about this guy using the K-word and make sure they tag me in it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so this person wants to ride on all that hellfire that happened on social media yeah. around race with me yeah. and wants to spark a new thing for yeah. me. And I literally ignored it. Because they want to make that your narrative. Yes, the, the, exactly. The, you know, the black girl mm. on an Afrikaans radio mm. station who is constantly hopping on about race. Mm -hmm. And now they're belittling the, the good work that you are doing by changing exactly. minds. Mm -hmm. But ladies, we also have to be very careful not to create an environment in, in, in South African black Twitter or whatever that says that people can't be criticized. Because now you have a situation where you've got these celebrities who've got these delusions of grandeur where mm. they think they are holy cows that cannot be touched. But this no. is why I'm saying no, that. No, listen. Is there, it, it, because I'm famous and you're famous, am I not supposed to now not... Like, am I, should I not then comment on something that you are obviously doing and everyone is That's obviously That's what I'm trying to get to. That's what I'm trying to get to. My apologies, sorry. So you need to differentiate between, okay, this is Phil judging my work, this is Phil reacting to what I'm doing to my brand, this is Phil reacting to a product mm. that I put out there, then this is Phil just messing with, you know, my own personal space and stuff like that. And sometimes those lines get blurred, you know, especially when you have stands, you know, mm. where they will attack anybody who has no. anything that is not glorifying your work. Mm. And I feel like sometimes celebrities have a responsibility when you see that happens, when you see somebody who's giving your job a bad review mm. and they're getting dragged and they're getting attacked, it's incumbent on you to say, hey, guys, this person is helping me grow, like you said. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. so, so that there's a clear distinction between trolls and people who are just 
just simply there to do their job as critics and who are there to uplift the entertainment industry. Can mm. I ask a stupid question? Is yes. it because people think social media is not real life? <laughs> That's all I'm asking. <laughs> Anela, there's a difference between me going, what you said was stupid, yeah. mm. and then me going, but Anela, did you even research? Mm. Yeah. Do you any research yeah. on white Facebook while yeah. you're talking about black Twitter? Yeah. The, then, you understand, even if I'm criticizing her and going, you are biased. Yeah. There's a difference between me calling her biased and calling her stupid. Yeah. And it's the same thing on social media. Yeah. People are enjoying the fact that it's a street where everybody just throws in and they can run away anytime they want without consequence. But it's a good street as well. You know, like, no, I mean, like, be a great <laughs> I'm sitting here now because of social media. You know my story. I've yes, never had a yeah. nine to five job. Yeah. I was able to build a career yeah. through uh, the internet and social media platforms. And I believe that if we are able to look at those, you know, divisions that you're talking about mm -hmm. within the black Twitter, within the Twitter space, we can actually encourage people to know that, okay, there's just that street. I want the wretched street to go to Twitter that you can just stay yeah. away from. But that does not mean that the entire platform of Twitter is like that. I used to be scared of coming to Twitter because I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be attacked all the time. Mm. But now I've got people who are saying, oh, thank you for your honesty. Mm. Thank you for doing your job because yeah. if you didn't do that, nobody else is... You know what I mean? Mm. So if I just sat back and said, Twitter is just a bad space where people are just angry and whatever. Oh, I love it. Mm. And this is why, you know, when, some, when something's going down, they're like, stay off Twitter, don't say anything. I'm like, but now I've got other things to answer. So I can be answering yeah. this and answering <laughs> this at the same time. You catch what you catch on the yeah. timeline. What belongs to you, you take. Quickly before we wrap, yeah. my way, H&M, Dove, they, uh, in the last six years, mm -hmm. in the six years, last six months, they're the ones that kind of stood up on social media yeah. and received some bad PR. Uh, how would you have gone about it if you were managing their social media pages? Uh, well, because the intention right now is to get that attention. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I believe that these brands right now are just willing to offend and Whoa. to get attracted. Because what's, 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 what's the, the, thing, the negative point for them? It's nothing because their stores still remain open. Their brands still remain uh, uh, wherever it is that they, they, they're published. So they don't lose anything. In fact, they get more attention. So I feel like we are at the point right now where these marketing managers and brand managers are just sitting there thinking, hmm, this is bad, but guess what? <laughs> it's going to get us more. People are going to talk exactly. about it. Exactly. What do you think? I agree, and exactly. it's sad. But I feel like we can't control our own PR anymore, Anele. That's yeah. what worries me about social media, though. We are not so much in control of our own PR. Do you know what? For me, I feel that people... What you're saying, social media is real. Mm -hmm. So therefore, let's look at the reality of what South Africa is at the yeah. moment. Yes, there's hope. I mean, you know, there could be a new reign coming on and a new sovereign. Yeah. Uh, but so people... <laughs> sorry, I've been watching The Crown. <laughs> so, uh, people are hurting. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just know that. Yes. Uh, people are... Some are destitute, some are unemployed. Mm. Most are unemployed. Let's mm. not forget what are unemployed. Where do they find the date? Uh, I mean, you buy it at the petrol station, you get 100, 100 mm. megabytes for free. You know, people don't have anything to do. Universities, right? they're hotspots. Yeah, and, 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 and I just feel like what you're saying is right, is that now people, now brands are out there using people's angst, yeah. people's uncertainty yeah. uh, in, the, in the wrong way. Because there's a thing, though, Anela, sorry to cut you off. You cannot tell me that nobody in any of those companies, in any of those brands uh, offices when they are structured whatever nobody said guys i don't think this will work you cannot tell me you, you you'll be hard pressed to convince yeah. me otherwise i'm sorry but a part of me feels like if you've gotten away with something long enough you, you do become all... desensitized to it and that you do think it'll fly and that's what i think guys Thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Because you're right, that monkey one, I was like, somebody said that. This monkey, <laughs> this monkey said I ain't gonna work, but still somebody did it. Thanks so much to Timmy and Phil for sharing. Listen, a voice note put my entire house into a frenzy. Like, everyone was cleaning out the fridge. We threw it out. They were like, no, let's take it back in. Find out what it is when we come back. I'll play the voice note. You want to hear it. <laughs> And we're back. More than 700 South Africans have fallen ill and more than 60 have died in the current outbreak of listeriosis. And just recently, a Joburg food outlet was hit by listeriosis strain. It's said to be the largest ever outbreak of the disease linked to food poisoning. So what do you need to know about listeriosis? How dangerous is it? What are the symptoms? How is, it infection, how is the infection treated? Should we be panicking as a society? To answer these questions and to help us understand a little bit more about the disease outbreak, I'm joined in studio by family physician, Dr. Fundi Lenyati. Uh, welcome to the show. 
Thank I have you. to say this. My dad knows you. <laughs> Apparently, he says, I must say, hi, Doogie Hauser. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was me many, many years ago. Why are you Doogie Hauser? Well, I mean, um, I was an intern at Tumtata General Hospital. Oh, and I looked up. so young. I was about 22, 23. Oh. So each time when I was helping them, Tata Bushbergs, you know, with their sports medicine thing, so they just gave me that name, and uh, it just stuck like that. Okay, because yes. my dad Be also used to work for the soccer team. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so there was this TV program of the young doctor from the U.S. Who qualified at 14 or 15 Yes, exactly. So they thought, well, actually, he looks like him. Doogie Hauser. <laughs> yeah. So let's... Uh, uh, two weeks ago, I, I get this WhatsApp voice note, ne? Yeah. It's five minutes long. Yes, I, I listened to it as well. Did you? And it's yes. long, right? And, yes. it, and and the more I hear, the more my blood is like boiling and I'm, I'm, I've got plans that we're never going to eat anything again in the house. We're going to eat water and, you know, if we're hungry, we want dessert, we'll have air. Yeah. Because it's the only way, you know, you're going to stay alive if this is true. I want to play you this voice note so you can kind of hear bits and pieces of it and mm. then me and the doctor will break it down and kind of, you know, discuss listeriosis as a whole. Please roll it. A passenger of mine who's been a passenger of mine f for many years. She's a doctor for many years and she has worked for the government for many years also. She begged me, she pleaded with me and then she, she was telling me that I'm telling you this because I care of you and please even if you tell your family or your friends or your loved ones, do not reveal my, my name. There's a disease out there. The government is containing it, is not telling people about it. It's in South Africa. It's called listeriosis. I will send you the name so that you can Google it yourself. It has killed over 640 people. This woman was showing me class classified government, you know, documents on my flight today. Okay, so you, you get the gist, right? Yeah. Uh, you get the gist that, you know, it's out there and this is what people are saying. And this yes. is why, as Real Talk, we decided we're going to get the professionals in here so we can ask those questions because, yeah. A, 600 people have not passed away yes. from mysteriosis. Well, That's the first one. Actually, that is the voice note that made me to write, you know, some, you know, some, some information on my Facebook page because yeah. I felt it's going to make people panic. Yes. All right? Yes, we've had about, let's say, 750 plus people now who've been infected yes. in the last 12 months, and uh, just over, um, you know, 70 now mm. have died from the, you know, from, 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 from the outbreak. Mm. But that person is talking about 600 people who have died, and the government is, is hiding information. And, and she's and, getting and, and, shown and, and, classified and, and, documents. Yes, so I felt that's serious disinformation. And, you know, if nobody comes out and clears that, yeah. we're going to put people, you know, on, like, high levels of panic, and I don't know what's going to happen. It talks about people should stop eating certain, you know, chicken from yeah. certain outlets. I mean, that's nonsense, you know. So based on that, I decided, no, let me just try and summarize this thing and yeah. give some basic information. Uh, yes, we have an outbreak, and this outbreak in South Africa is the worst that we've ever had. Mm. On, on, you know, on, on a normal year, about 80, maybe 100 people get infected, you know, with very few who So die. this is not a new disease? It's not a new disease. It's actually been there low grade, ah. you know, and it's, it's not just here. Across the world, in Europe, they've got it as well, you know, but in South Africa, it's the first time that it is actually causing so much havoc. Why? You know, and I think the big problem at this moment is, one, where is the source, all right? So the, the, the medical fraternity, you know, the scientists, the medical scientists are trying to pin it down to say, where is this coming from? So we because don't know what causes it. We know the germ, okay? okay? Uh, we know that the germ is normally found, you know, um, you know uh, uh, in contaminated food. And mm. usually, uh, when you're trying to manage the outbreak, you need to zoom in and say, 
where is the food contaminated? Is there a food processing plant? Mm -hmm. You know, somewhere, you know? Okay. Uh, and then you look at the gem, isolate it, and look at the genes, you know, uh, the, 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 you know the, 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 the DNA yeah. of the gem. And then- Where is it, it most comfortable? No, no, no. You know, the, the sequence okay. of the DNA. Yeah. You know, because there's different types of this listerosis. Others are, are harmless. Others are harmful, all right? So once we isolate, out of about 13 types of listeriosis, uh, you know, there's about three that are responsible for about 90% of the infections. So we need to isolate, you know, that germ. And if it is the same strain uh, or type, then the likelihood is that the source of contamination is one place. And you, and you have almost two thirds you know, uh, of people, people who are infected being in Gauteng. Mm, so mm. there is, you know, a food processing center, most likely here in Gauteng. But the, in the, you know, the local authorities who are now, you know, responsible for environmental health are still struggling. You know, that's why they are doing raids at different food sources. Just to kind to of inspect and, and check. They inspect How do and I check. know I've got it? Well, um, you know, the majority of people who get infected with uh, listeriosis actually do not present with any illness. So an average person with a normal immunity, you know, doesn't normally have a problem. The big problem is those people with a weak immune system. Uh -huh. Okay? So people, you know, who are maybe HIV infected, they're yes. taking steroids for asthma, you know, people who are pregnant, okay? Uh, neonates, that is those people who are, you know, the kids yeah. uh, who are under 28 days yes. of age, you know, so their immunity is still very weak. So those are the people who are at risk. The older people, 65 plus, because their immunity is starting mm -hmm. to be, you know, so those are the people who are at risk. But, you know, you, uh, you might contract it, but not get the but infection. But because you're strong and your, yes. you, your, your vitamins are there and, yes. and your, 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 your blood is fine, yes. it won't be as severe. Yes. If, if it comes, it will be a mild flu-like illness. It's only a minority of people, you know, out of the infected people who actually get the severe form that will, you know, even uh, cause what we call septicemia. That is, you, you know, you get infection in the whole of your blood system that overwhelms your immune system uh. or get it to, you know, uh, infect your brain and the covering of your brain, something called, you know, meningoencephalitis, mm. you know. Uh, but it's just a small percentage of people out of the total number of people. So it's important for us to say most people are infected, nothing happens to them. Okay. However, it doesn't mean we must be careless. We because need to therefore to take say. certain precautions uh, to make sure that uh, you know, uh, we don't contract mm -hmm. this and there are basic things that need to be done to make sure that uh, the food that we eat uh -huh. uh, is not infected. Okay, I was about to say, because, you know, I hear you when you say, you know, it's not that bad, but if 60 people have died, yes. it's a little bad. Yes. After the break, we'll talk about how you protect yourself, how you make sure that it's not coming into your kitchen, and uh, how you treat it if you think that you do have it, where you should be going. Yes. We're joined by another expert. Join us after the break. We're looking at the outbreak of the foodborne listeriosis and, sca and scary is that the source of the contamination is not yet known, like the doctor was saying. But how can you prevent contracting the disease? Uh, madam, so you're joining us and what I want to know from you, as a dietitian, right? Because we were told, wash your food with apple vinegar. Yeah? 
Oh, wash the apple three times and then <laughs> and then shine it and then wash it again with our food. What should we be doing to make sure that it's not coming into our kitchens? Okay, so basically it's just about food hygiene. So washing is definitely important. But you know, with the fruit and vegetables, you wash it and if you could just give it a good wash, that will help prevent the contamination. And then also separating your raw materials from your cooked materials. I don't understand that. So your raw vegetables, for instance, if you're making a salad, yes. you cook it and then you, uh, you make the salad and then obviously you separate it. So then the cutting board you were using, wash it before you prepare raw chicken on it, for instance. Oh, okay. So that keeps the two separate. And then other things, it's just like good hygiene, washing your hands, making sure that your cutlery and crockery is also clean. Mm. And then practicing using um, clean water as well, because water can also be a source of contamination. Really? Yes. And then there's also certain food products to be aware of. So things like unpasteurized milk, you know, the milk they use in the homeland yes. that isn't pasteurized. Yes. So that can also be a source as well. Mm. Okay, so we shouldn't be, because I mean, there's this that don't eat chicken. I'm like, yes. no, no, I'm not going to no. stop yes. eating no. chicken. I think, let me, let me come in there. Uh, this gem, you normally find it in animal products, okay? Okay? Uh, so milk is an animal product. Yes. Mm. All right? So if it's not properly pasteurized, then you are likely to get it there. Mm. Um, veggies, you know, you grow it out there because this gem, you find it in soil, in water, and in vegetation. Mm. So those raw materials, uh, especially if you're going to use things like salad, you're going to do things like salad, you know, mm. then uh, there is a chance. Now, this gem is very sensitive to heat. So when you cook food properly... It dies. It will die. So this is more okay. like salmonella. Yes. The yes. way you prevent yes. salmonella is yes. how you prevent so, so, listeriosis. So it doesn't like it. All right? So if you cook properly, it will die. Now, if you have, like you said, a raw meat, mm. fish, mm. and you know, and things like those, uh, if you're going to cook them properly, then there's no problem because it will die there. But if you leave cooked food for, let's say, more than two hours yeah. and you don't take it to the fridge, then if the germ is there, it will grow. So there's right. a way in which I can bring it in. Wait. Is the way in which it comes into my house and it's mild, but then it meets up with other things, and then there's a party in the kitchen, and then we all get it. If you mix yeah, the if stuff. If you mix the things. And so like he says, you definitely need to cook your food thoroughly, but also like if you're preparing um, meals. If you're using a cutting board and you're cutting raw chicken, that yes. might leave the germ on the board. And then it and then you bring Yeah, and then it grows. And then you bring your lettuce onto the very same board, and you're chopping it up. Obviously, you're not cooking your lettuce, mm. so that's not going to kill the germ. Yes. So it ends up now in your salad. So that's why it's important then to separate your cooked items from your raw items. Yes. Are you not worried about the, the disease? No, not at all. Not why? At all. Because, you know, if you, like you said, it really affects your healthy person. It's more your immune compromised persons that get affected. Mm. But also if you really practice good hygiene, then it will be fine. Yeah. And also there hasn't been a source yet that's been found to say definitely it's the chicken or definitely yeah. it's this product. Yeah. So most of your foods are still safe. And then just to be safe, far, mm -hmm. just practice good hygiene. Yeah. Good doctor, you're not worried about it at all? No. Um, just focusing on basic hygiene, uh -huh. all right? Keep things clean, wash my hands eh, before I eat, yes. when I come back from the toilet, you know, uh, in between, you know, preparing uh, foods. So if you do that, then the chances are very, very, very little mm. that you could have this thing. Obviously, she talked about water. Mm. Make sure that the water that you, you drink it's, uh, it's, 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 it's safe. It's, yeah. it's, it's safe water, mm. and safe means it will not cause illness in you. Uh. You know, so I am not, uh, you know, uh, worried. Yes, people are dying, uh, and we we're trying to understand why is this listeria gem strain here killing people? You know, more than before. But in general, I mean, there's 55 million South Africans, and we've only had, you know, uh, just just about 700, you know, 750 people who have been infected and about 70 people who, mm -hmm. who have died. But even one person dying from something that is preventable, from an illness that is treatable, mm -hmm. is a problem, okay. all right? But when you go and buy those cold meats, 
you know, that is uh, the processed, you know, foods like that, your cold meats uh, and the milk that is unpasteurized, mm. uh, you must be careful. Okay, doctor, thank you so much. I must go. Thank you so much uh, for your expertise as well. Look, that's all we have time for. The symptoms, if you get a temperature, you feel a bit fluy, uh, you could possibly have listeriosis. It is heightened and it might be severe if you get back pains and you're cold and your body is sore, then you must go to your doctor. But like you've just been put at ease, it is nothing where we must all stop eating things. Let's just make sure that everything must be clean that and make sure that your well. house is uh, is hygiene, you know, hygiene friendly. Okay, that's where we're leaving it. So Listen, well. tomorrow... Uh, we've got AKA in the house. The super maker is coming here. He's got new music out. We're going to talk about his music journey, his life, the love of his life, his little daughter. All of it is happening tomorrow on SABC 3 at 5 p.m. Make sure that you join us then. From me and the rest of the team, good night. <laughs>